There has been a lot of media buzz lately about some big changes in the real estate industry. It could be online, it could be on Facebook, but I wanna make sure that you have the facts and you understand how these changes will impact you, whether you're buying or selling. I am Linnea Carver, I'm with eXp Realty, and I've been helping people in our community upgrade their living situation, either through buying or selling, for the last seven years. And I have actually seen the joy on their faces when they get the keys, and the relief on my seller's faces when they finally close the chapter and are able to move on to the next adventure. It's those moments that make this job so rewarding. That being said, there are some changes to the industry that the media, doing what they do best, has spread some myths, truth, mistruths about. So over the next few minutes, I wanna help dismantle fact from fiction, media versus reality. Myth number one, sellers are no longer required to pay buyer's agent commission. Okay, this is kind of true. I'll explain more in a bit, but the no longer part is the untrue part. The seller has never been required to pay buyer's agent compensation. Myth number two, another semi-truth is that blanket offers of buyer's agent commission will no longer be listed on the MLS. And while this is true on a national level, here in the Northwest MLS, we are doing things a little bit differently. In our market, we believe in transparency, so we are continuing to disclose compensation on the MLS. Myth number three, another change is that buyers now need a signed agreement to work with their agent. The media makes it sound like this is a huge disadvantage, so it's also a semi-truth. I want you to think of it like a partnership agreement. The buyer's agency agreement outlines the terms, the compensation, and the exclusivity. It's about protecting both you and your agent. The reality is, in our area, buyer agent and seller agent compensation have been separated on the listing agreements for several years. It has never been mandatory for the seller to cover buyer's agent's fees. However, in many cases, sellers have chosen to do so because it can widen their buyer pool, especially in the case of FHA or VA buyers that might not have a lot of extra cash. And now with these new changes, you actually have more options. So here are the three options when it comes to being a seller and paying buyer agent compensation. The first option is that you can choose to pay it upfront and choose the amount. This is not a change. Second is that you can choose to offer no compensation, which is also not a change. The third is that you can ask the buyer to include the compensation request in their offer. This flexibility could be beneficial to you, uh, but I want you to understand the potential impact on your sales price. Having a signed buyer representation agreement is not something to be scared of. Sellers have been required to have a signed agreement to work with the listing agent for as long as I can remember, for decades. It's widely beneficial for you to have this because it's gonna provide clarity. It's gonna provide protection, like I said, for both you and your agent. Because upfront, what's gonna happen is you are going to discuss terms and conditions, the length of the agreement, exclusivity, service areas, and most crucially, compensation and how that could affect you. So this is how it works on our team. During the onboarding process, we are gonna review an estimated closing cost statement. This will include all of your fees, lender fees, inspection and appraisal fees, recording, title, escrow, notary, anything else that we can think of, and any buyer agent compensation. So based on your out-of-pocket budget, we are gonna go over several options to ensure that the payment and the out-of-pocket compensation are aligned within your budget. That way you can rest assured that we are working for you. The other thing you wanna know about buyer agent agreements is that there's a lot of room for negotiation. So don't hesitate to ask questions and make sure it actually works for you. By the way, I have a great video explaining the new brokerage law in Washington. If you want a copy of it, just let me know. Paying the buyer's agent is more complex than it seems. The compensation is often factored into the sales price, especially in the past. So while it does come out of the seller's net proceeds, it also affects the buyer's mortgage payments. So in, essentially, it's kind of like both parties are responsible for both agents' compensation. The other thing to think about when it comes to compensation is if sellers opt not to offer compensation, it could lead to lower offers and here's why. Let's say you have two comparable homes. One is offering buyer's agent compensation, one is not, they're exactly the same, but they're listed at the exact same price. So the one who is not offering compensation 
could actually be valued in a buyer's eyes at X percent less than the comparable homes who are offering buyer's agent compensation. Now these changes might seem a bit overwhelming, but that is where I come in. I want to be able to guide you through this evolving landscape. I want to answer your questions and I want to ensure that you make informed decisions because this is all about you, whether you're buying or you're selling. My team and I are committed to providing you with the expertise and support that you need to achieve your real estate goals. If you have any questions about these industry changes or anything else real estate related, we want to help because we're in this together. Join us for our upcoming webinar where we are going to break down these industry shifts, answer your burning questions, and equip you with the knowledge you need to make confident, informed decisions. Register today. Can't wait to see you there.